reached out to the Lord. I cried out unto the Lord. And I came here to give him glory. I came here to give him worship. We come together to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever you are, I want you to put a praise on your lips. And I want you to be intentional and let everyone know. God bless you and praise the Lord, people of God. This is Bishop David E. Johnson coming to you live on this great evening. I want to just talk to each and every one of you and thank you and welcome you into an amazing service we're going to have on tonight. Listen, people of God, we have a reality that's before us. And our reality is race relation, relations and, and other issues that, <clears throat> that plague our community. And I want you to know that we're doing something about that here at Grace Apostolic Church. We're having forums, we're having conversation, we're meeting with the community, we're talking to the chief of police, the mayor, and other pastors in this community. As tonight, this service tonight, this service is going to be about us building and bridging the gap. We're not here to create other divides, but we're here to build the gap and bridge the community together. I don't know about you, but I appreciate your help, your support and all that you've done. Thank you for taking the journey with us. It's been challenging, it's been rough, but we've been doing this thing together. We have worked diligently in having meetings, Zoom meetings, communication, prayer, and many other things that we're doing to help us have a unified church and an earth that looks like heaven. I'm telling you, it's taking some work and some time but I believe God is with us and we're better together. Join us on tonight and more work is to come. But tonight we take you on this journey as we go back in time to talk about some reality, deal with some real issues, but more importantly, look at resolution. I thank you for your time, your love and your support. Sit back and enjoy this service in Jesus name. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord. Y'all better talk back to me in here. Praise the Lord, somebody. Come on, everything to the Lord in prayer. We might as well have a little bit of church and take everything to God in prayer, to the prayer room. Come on and clap, 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 clap. Grandmama say, since we're here, we might as well have church. I know I got two or three that'll agree. Clap, 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 clap. Parents 
Father, we ask that this praise be acceptable in our sight. Please accept our worship. Give thanks to you. Come on, you got a hold to his unchanging hand. Do I got a witness at home? You got a hold to his unchanging hand. for you.
African Bishop David E. Johnson, Senior Pastor of Grace Apostolic Church, and I'm honored to have with us a guest, a friend, and a fellow colleague in the Word of God. Good evening. My name is Pastor John Nelson. I'm from Gethsemane Lutheran Church in Hopkins, right down the road, your neighbor. And listen, Pastor John, we have done some amazing work. We are both part of the Minnetonka Faith Leaders um, Coalition here in the Minnetonka area, working collaboratively to uh, put out, stump out, stamp out, and extinguish uh, racism in our community. And we're working collaboratively to do that work together. I'm honored that you have partnered with us in so many different ways. Your church, Gethsemane, and many others of, of, of your congregation have done great things by being part of our parking lot prayer, which we called uh, We're Better Together. And even with our other co-partner here and the work that we're doing in Minnetonka, Pastor Satis, with it's now is the time. And because we've partnered in these ways and worked collaboratively together, I want to thank you for just joining us to allow us to do this work. Let me tell you something. I think it's interesting and quite ironic that you allowed me to come and share the word of life in your congregation. Oh, I felt like a fish out of water. I'm telling you, <laughs> my goodness. We are gracious that you were willing to take uh, take that dive uh, in, into a, a solid pulpit that didn't have a lot of room for flexibility like you're used to. <laughs> well, I'm honored that we were able to build this working relationship. And you've agreed to come and worship with us and share the gospel in Jesus' name. In this specific, this specific work that we're doing here at Grace Apostolic Church in the city of Minnetonka. We're doing something really ironic. I want you to talk to us, Pastor John, about, about the work that you're doing in Hopkins. Tell us about the work you're doing in Hopkins. Well, I'm, I'm honored. And, and as you know, uh, growth only happens through relationship and through being honest with one another. And as we all have known, you know, Sunday morning, uh, unfortunately, has been one of the most segregated times in the history of our nation. Uh, we yeah. don't worship together, yeah. even though we worship the same God. That's we right. don't get to hear each other sharing that word. 
um, as God empowers and the Holy Spirit gives each of us that mm-hmm. gift of prophecy. Yeah. And um, it's the word of God that's going to change our hearts and our minds in all the different ways that we hear it. And so um, we are honored, and, and this is why I felt compelled that I needed to get out of my little box and my wow. pulpit and, and come and, and be with you and your congregation and was super blessed to be a part of that and have you come and into our uh, faith home and, and also share your message with us. So that was that's pure gift. That's where this relationship really starts and, Absolutely. and grows. But in terms of, you know, Gethsemane and our work in Hopkins, you know, we have been a member of the uh, community for over 125 years. Wow. Um, If you've been a part of the congregation or the community for that long, you're invested in all the different components of it. And you have a responsibility for all the systems that have been in place that you've worked with, benefited by, um, and unfortunately uh, have constricted sometimes, perhaps. And so... As we know, systemic racism is not a problem of uh, people of color. It's really an issue for our white population to broaden their awareness, their horizons, the the things, you know, as uh, as the the Apostle Paul said, you know, Lord, don't help me with the things I don't know what I'm doing, the things I want to do but I don't do, uh, help me with those things. And so we as a church realize we need help with the Holy Spirit and with God's power to change uh, so that this is a welcoming and prosperous community for all people. Um, and so I've felt that you know, the role Gethsemane has as being around so long is we have to have a voice in dismantling racism. Absolutely. Um, that happens not just in our church, but in the city, in the school district, in the police department, um, in all the different places that we have deep relationships if you and I can share this message through genuine relationship, then I can share that same genuine relationship in this message with those others uh, that actually are in seats of power. Wow, wow. I think that is dynamite on how Gethsemane, being led by you, Pastor John, have really gained this fuel and fire to work towards a serious issue, knowing that if we don't do it together, it will not happen. And I appreciate what you're doing. Please. Well, and it is not just me. You know, it's, it's me knowing the heart of my people and my staff. Um, and, and it's their, I'm like, if, if this is what you say you're going to do, then we're going to walk that walk. Right. And I'm going to lead you in walking that walk. Wow. Uh, and getting over your inhibitions. So, wow. together, we are the church. That's and right. And we're better together. And we're better together. Uh, Pastor John, thank you. Thank you very much. We have some great work that's coming up. We are creating in Minnetonka an opportunity that we call uh, from history to harmony. And we're going to take a journey in this process to take um, the city of Minnetonka, the, the, the parishioners, the, the, the chief of police and the entire staff, and many others that would like to join with us in this faith walk to go from history to our harmony. And I want you to be part of this. More to come, more to talk about. I want you to be blessed Thank you, Pastor John, for joining us today in Jesus' name. We have a lot, and I'm excited about the Word of God. Amen. To that I'm telling you, I'm excited about the Word of God. People of God, stay tuned. Be blessed. Be encouraged. We love you all in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you and praise the Lord. This is Bishop David E. Johnson, Senior Pastor of Grace Apostolic Church. And we have with us. Uh, good morning, Bishop Johnson. My name is Scott Borman, the police chief in Minnetonka, and good morning to your viewers. Well, thank you. Uh, I want to just say to everybody that's watching and viewing today, we are excited about the work that we're doing and the work that you're going to experience by being able to watch this video and this service on today. I want to say that the chief and I are doing great work in this community. We are working collaboratively to do some uh, We're Better Together parking lot prayer and also gatherings throughout the city of Minnetonka. But we're also excited about what is up and coming, and it is our new initiative that we're going to be working on, and that is from history to harmony. Chief, as we work on these things to bring collaboration, unity, togetherness, tear down the wall of divide and separation in the African-American community, in the African-American church, what are some of the things that we're doing collectively as a partnership in the community of Minnetonka to work on some of these issues. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just to go back um, probably four or five years when we first put together our faith leaders group, um, you know, we met uh, quarterly. We had discussions about various topics. And then, you know, in the last eight months, obviously, things have changed dramatically. And, and our focus is much more specific um, because we know there's, there's a divide. Yes. Um, we need the community, and the community needs the police. Absolutely. And so my... My desire is to, to continue these, these tough conversations and, and continue the discussions specifically around police hiring, training, policy, culture. All right. um, and, you know, I, I look forward to those conversations because, as you know, um, we need to do better. Absolutely. And we will. And with your help um, and, and your, your, your Congregation here, um, opening up your, your doors to the police department has just been fantastic. And so wow. I, I appreciate it. Um, I look forward to continue these conversations um, because, like I said before, um, we need the community. And we need everybody in the community to feel uh, safe Absolutely. And, and welcome. Absolutely. Chief, I thank you for that. We have, we've worked a long time <clears throat> already, about four-plus years and making this work happen. We've worked with uh, faith-based community leaders here in Minnetonka, but I appreciate the opportunity to work specifically with you on some of the harder detail things that, that we're doing from a conservative, uh, thoughtful, concise approach of dealing with racism, <clears throat> dealing with separation, dealing with divide, and, and because uh, we're able to have conversation about these things. Yes, they're tough. Yes, it's rough. But I appreciate you. I really do that you have taken on the, the, the right thinking, the, the approach to bring us together. Um, the work you're doing with creating certain videos and training your staff and bringing us along. And it's not just stuff that, that you're doing and then passing it to us later. You're bringing us along in the journey. Talk about that, please. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, and we could, we could talk about uh, education and, and transportation, affordable housing. Those are all very important topics. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, um, you know, my purpose today is race relations, making sure that um, all people, people of color, um, are comfortable being um, approached by an officer. And so my realization came about about a year ago when I had the mother of a young black driver call me and describe her 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 um, her experience. Yeah. And it just, I felt like you know, I felt like we've come a long way. Mm -hmm. But when I heard her speak to me, I was like, wow, we gotta really, really um, roll up the sleeves and, and get the work. And and from that, um, as you mentioned, we we did a short video, um, just to give perspective. Um, and and so uh, we continue to do that. I, I think it's a it's an eye opener for our, our officers. Sure. Um, but it's also, um, it's been well received in the community as well. And so I look forward to more work um, specifically regarding police and community relations, specifically people of color. Absolutely. Chief, thank you. Thank you very much. To all of our guests and viewers that are watching and viewing this amazing service on today, we wanted to just take a moment and share with you the amazing work that we're doing in this community, the community of Minnetonka, with our chief, the chief of police. People of God, you be blessed. Stay tuned for more things that are coming. Be encouraged, everyone, and praise the Lord.
faith be more than thumbs. Greater than a song to me. And in our weakness and temptation, we believe. We believe. Yeah, we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah, we believe in the Holy Spirit. And He sees us through life. Yeah, we believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And He's coming back. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. Oh, let the rock be found. Let the rock be found and the dead be raised. And here and now, the God will stay. Let the church burn down. The God will say, We believe, we believe that the gates of hell will not prevail through the power of God. The sword that fails, that we know your love will never fail. We believe, we believe, yeah, we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's giving us new life. Thank you for joining in with us on this evening as we prepare to receive a donation and or offering for the work that we're doing in this community. I am thankful that you have tuned in with us and viewed so far. I hope that the Holy Spirit, the power of God has blessed you and pricked your heart to seed into this work that we're doing in this community. I know for a fact that things are very challenging for all, but if you would be so, so kind and, and godly hearted to to bless this service and this work that we're doing. We ask that you will just look below and you can see right there on the screen before you three different ways of seeding and sowing and contributing a donation to the work that we're doing regarding race relation and community engagement here in Minnetonka. I'm gonna ask for those of us that are willing to seed and partner with us even on today, take your time, do whatever God has called you to do. But I'll ask that you would be a blessing and be a rich blessing to the people of God. We're trying to do great work in this community. Amen. And we need your help and we need your support. I'm going to ask even right now for Pastor John to come as you're preparing your heart, preparing your gift, preparing your donation. Whatever you choose to see, I will not ask for no numeric number. But if we can have over 500 partners to sow with us today, I believe God will bless. Pastor John, would you be so kind to just pray over those that are going to see and sow and donate into this work that we're doing today. Would you be so kind, my friend? Let us go. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the ways that you continue to empower and bless your people, not just in this place, but in this community. We ask that you would move and stir the hearts of those that are listening. For where, the, where there is a will, there is a way. Your people for generations have given thanks for being able to come and bring an offering and lay it at your altar. And it is this place and this time that you are calling your people once again. You have blessed them to be a blessing. You have given to them so that they can give. Work within these people in this community. Those ways that you have already predetermined that you will bring about your kingdom in this place. Let us be vessels 
that can store up your power. Use us as your hands and your feet in this place and use those that are listening to empower and enable this powerful work to happen through grace in their community outreach and the work to end systemic racism in our neighborhoods. Lord, hear these prayers that we lift up to you and bring them to fruition through your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your generous giving. And I thank you for every seed, every sower, and every donation that has been given today. Be blessed. You're sowing on good ground. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Romans 12, 16 says, live in harmony with one another. Now, harmony kind of gets a bad rap, I think. It's been made out to be a little bit of a soft word and kind of fluffy, nebulous, uh, touchy-feely. Let's just be about harmony. Actually, it has a really rich meaning, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But one thing I want us to note to start with is this verse here, Romans 12, 16, says, live in harmony with one another do you see that that's a command do you see that that's a directive given to us through the scripture it's an anticipation an expectation of how we ought to live in response to god's amazing mercy to us live in harmony with one another it's not a i pray that you live in harmony i hope that you live in harmony i encourage you to live in harmony no, it's a straight up command. Live in harmony with one another. So what is harmony? Well, if you look into it, it's a really rich, rich word in the Greek, phroneo. And it's talking about the wholeness of oneself, to think, to have a, a mindset, to be minded. And it's an active word that is represented by involving not only your affections, but also your will and your conscience. And I think we think about it with our affections when we think of the word harmony, like we should love one another. We should really have some feelings towards one another of affections, things that we care about and we demonstrate that we care. And a lot of times when we're talking about this journey to hope and in this context of racial relationships and what's going on in the world, we think, yeah, we just, we just need to love one another and get along. And it's true that we need to care about each other. That's, that's for sure. It's really important. And, and love is the most powerful force in the universe. But it's more than that. It's also engaging our conscience and our will. And our conscience is about what we think. It's the judgments, the attitudes that we make, decisions, uh, how we think about what is just and what is right and what is true and how we ought to conduct ourselves. And it also talks about the will. And that involves what we do, what we practically do with our hands, with our talent, with our time, with our treasure. All of these things are engaged, the wholeness of ourself. To live in harmony with one another means affections, conscience, and will. So what's an example of how something like that can make a difference? Tommy referenced the trip that we went on down south and we explored different sites of the civil rights movement and we journeyed together and in one sense many of us felt like we became family like this relationship developed out of there a deep love for one another but when COVID-19 hit because we understood context because we had relationship for one another because in our minds and in our conscious we were able to make judgments about what was going to happen and how the impact of COVID-19 was going to fall unequally upon part of our body, our African-American brothers and sisters here in our city. And out of that, we said, what should we do? What, how do we move our will to live in harmony with one another? And so as a group, a number of pastors gathered together and said, let's do something. Let's think about this ahead of time and prepare a gift to give and generosity out of those dynamics of our relationship, our affections, our conscience, and our will. 
And what started as a seed of hope, just a little seed that was planted, God in his mercy and moving through the hearts of his people, over a half a million dollars was raised by the church in the Twin Cities for our brothers and sisters in Christ to help to meet a need that was not hard to anticipate, that we knew was coming because we were engaged in living in harmony in our affections and our conscience and our will. And so I want to encourage you, I want to implore you, follow this command. It's a matter of discipleship to follow Jesus and to live in harmony. It's going to require your whole self and more than just your feelings. I'm Pastor Satis Brody. I serve as lead pastor with Oasis Church here in Minnetonka. Uh, right down the street here, so I didn't have to travel very far to get here. So first of all, I want to give honor to God, my Lord and Savior, and to Bishop and Lady Tisa. I um, speak blessings over Bishop and Lady Johnson and the Grace Place for inviting me and allowing me to share what God has placed on my heart uh, with this series, History to Unity. That is a powerful statement right there. It is such an honor to be part of this. I am honored and I am humbled. I love Bishop and Lady Johnson's heart for Jesus and the passion that they have for others. When my husband Tim and I first met them, we knew right away that it was definitely God ordained. We are thankful to be on this Jesus journey with them, both as co-laborers with Jesus and as friends. So bow your heads with me. Father, I thank you for this blessed time, this blessed opportunity for us to come together. I thank you, Father, that I get to come here and share what you have downloaded in my spirit. So I just pray in the name of Jesus that each and every person sitting under the sound of my voice, they have eyes to see, ears to hear, and an open heart to receive. So I thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking through me. It is not I who speak, but the Holy Spirit who speaks through me. So we give you all the honor, we give you all the glory, and we give you all the praise because you alone are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. So what I would like to do first is I want to share a few scriptures with you. Um, this will kind of set the, or lay the groundwork for where uh, God is leading me and what he has placed on my heart. I'm going to um, share these scriptures uh, before I get into the actual message. The name or the title of the message is Come in Unity. Come in Unity. And the first scripture that I would like to share with you is Genesis 1, 27. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. The fact that man is a special creation of God and that he was made in the image of God has the capacity to know God proves that man is a special creature in the eyes of God. Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. He had planned from the foundation of the world a glorious future for those who would choose the redeeming grace of Jesus Christ. And Genesis 2, 7. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into his, this man's nostrils. And the man became a living person. The man became a living person. Our creator breathed the breath of life into man's nostrils. And I want to share John 1, 4, which says, In him was life. And that life was a light of all mankind. These scriptures are very powerful and they have really been resonating with me for the last couple of weeks as I was preparing for this message. God is the one who gave us life. And as children of God, we are accountable to him and our desire should always be to please him. We were hit hard in 2020 with all the things that occurred, a global pandemic, nationwide unrest, presidential election, racism, rioting, and so much more. 
these things were mind-blowing, to say the least. We live in a time with uncertainties, unknowns, an ever-changing world with ever-changing circumstances. But even with all the uncertainties, there is someone we can always be certain of, and his name is Jesus. He is our constant. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. No matter the circumstances, we know that circumstances are subject to change when God is involved. We must keep our focus and our eyes on him. If we get distracted, if we look away for one second, we run the risk of being something or doing something that he never ever meant for us to be or do. So let's just keep our focus on him. Anything that is not of God is straight from the enemy. If we fail to see each other in the image of God, we are denying that Jesus Christ died to unite a broken humanity into a new unified humanity. He sent his son to reconcile us back to himself. Ephesians 1 says, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. Another scripture that I have for you is Acts 17, 28. For in him we live and move and exist. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. The Passion Translation says our lineage comes from him. And finally, Psalm 8, 4. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. I was compelled to share those scriptures with you as you journey with me and I bring the message that God has downloaded in my spirit to share with you all listening. So my prayer is that uh, he gives you eyes to see, ears to hear, and an open heart to receive. I pray that you are not just blessed, but you are changed and you are transformed by what he will speak through me. So today I want to speak to the church, the big C, and I'm not talking about the building. I want to speak about community. I believe in order to build community, it needs to start with us, the church. I believe that as the church, in order to do better, we have to be better. Now is the time, and we are better together. And we can do better if we choose to be better. 1 Corinthians 1.10 says, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church, rather be of one mind united in thought and purpose. So what is community? It's a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. Come in unity. Come in unity. It's a two-fold meaning. Come means to occur, to happen or take place. Come with me. When we see our neighbor, can we look at our brother and sister, reach out our hand and say, come with me. Even though they may look differently, even though they may think differently, even though they may not agree with everything that we believe, or we prepare to see others in the Imago Dei, in the image of God, can you ask them to join you? Unity means what unity means. Being unified or having a common union. Community is with unity. Come with me in unity. With God, it's all about partnership. It's about togetherness. It's about a unit. Can we look at our neighbor to say together, let's walk in unity. Let's do this. Let's do this together. There is nothing the enemy, the devil fears more than believers who are united. I'll say that again. There is nothing the devil fears more than believers who are united, who are coming together, who are standing together, who are journeying together, who are walking together. This means that his number one tactic, 
His number one goal is to bring disunity in the church body. It's like dislocating your shoulder from its joint. I've had a dislocated shoulder before. It's painful. It hurts. If the enemy can succeed, then the body of Christ is crippled. And my parents always told me, do not let anyone or anything make you a cripple. The enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He comes to separate, to divide. But God, Jesus comes to give us life and to give us life abundantly. This is why he came. Jesus spoke about the power of agreement. In Matthew 18, 19, he says, again, here is what I tell you. Suppose, suppose, or assume two of you are on earth agree about anything you ask for. My Father in heaven will do it for you. What if we did not put limitations on scripture? What if we did not limit the word of God? What do you think could happen? Jesus says that we can receive anything if we agree about it in prayer. Prayer is our common ground for unity. I just want to share with you a few of us pastors and faith leaders along with others in our community have been meeting for times of prayer to pray over our nations, our states, our cities, our communities. Some of us have gotten together to march in honor of unity. We marched together in rhythm. We marched in unity and togetherness. And although I am honored to do so because it needs to be done, I believe that we can come together being on one accord, showing love for each other at all times. I have to say that I don't believe that prayer is an event. I believe prayer is a lifestyle. Now is the time. Think about it. If we all marched in time, in rhythm, in unity, in togetherness, as family, as friends, as the church, the big C, what chains can be broken? The chains of racism, discrimination, unconscious biases, hate, pride, fear, what darkness can be exposed? What if we are intentional about what the scripture says? We are the light of the world. What could happen? Light trumps darkness. What stronghold of the enemy could we break over our nation, our cities, over our states, over our families? Matthew 18, 20 says, where two or three people gather in my name, I am there with them. So if there's no unity, Jesus is not there. No Jesus, no power. Where he is, we are powerful. Where he is not, we are powerless. We need Jesus more than we ever have before. With man, these things are impossible, but with him, all things are possible. Do you believe coming together in unity is possible? In Mark 6, 5 through 6, the people couldn't believe. I'll read that for you. Mark 6, 5 through 6. Jesus placed his hand on a few sick people and healed them, but he could not do any other miracles there. He was amazed because they had no faith. He was amazed because they had no faith. Let's be real. We don't need to look around too hard to see what's staring us right in the face. There's division, there's stress, there's anxiety. And my Bible says that anxiety in a man's heart causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. There's darkness, there's hate. You know, I love that um, Dr. Martin, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, when he says that I have decided to stick with love, hate is too great a burden to bear. Without love, there can be no unity. Without unity, there will be no peace. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. There is fear in this world, but God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. There is anger. What if we came against all these things in the name of Jesus? What if? What could happen? What if we all fought not to fight? Philippians 2, 
1 through 2 says, So does belonging to Christ help you in any way? Does his love comfort you at all? Do you share anything in common because of the Holy Spirit? Has Christ ever been gentle and loving toward you? If any of these things has happened to you, then agree with one another. Have the same love. Be in one spirit and in the way you think and act. By doing this, you will make my joy complete. It's all about pleasing him. When we pray and come together, get along with each other, God gets glorified. It's all about glorifying him. Come with me in unity. At any cost, at any cost, we must keep the body in perfect unity. As believers, we are bound together in one spirit. One spirit. One voice. One desire. One plan. One mind. One hope. One faith. One God and Father. Did you notice something here? Did you notice that everything was all about him? When our lives, our desires, our will, and our interests stop being about him and start to focus on us and the circumstances that surround us, we are headed for trouble. We are treading on dangerous territory. We may come from different places. We may not look the same but we stand on common ground, holy ground. With Christ, no weapon formed against us shall prosper because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. We're not all going to dress the same or agree on everything. It's okay to agree to disagree, but it must be done in love. Without love, there is no unity. Unity is unconditional love that is maintained even when differences come up. We have an advantage when we have uh, been connected with Christ, when we are connected with him, and when we're connected with each other. It matters to me that people get healed. It matters to me that people are treated fairly. It matters to me that justice is served. It matters to me that we walk in love. It matters to me that we accomplish God's plan and vision. It matters to me that we accomplish that plan and vision for the church so that we may advance the kingdom. It matters to me that we come together as children of God. It matters to me that the message of Jesus goes viral. It all matters. Why? Well, I'm glad you asked because it's, it matters to Jesus. 1 Corinthians 12, 25 through 26 says, this makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. So that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, then all the parts are glad. We are family, all God's children. It matters to me that we all realize that God is no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of persons. Black, white, brown, Jew, Gentile, the same Lord is the Lord of all. In 2 Chronicles 7, 14, it says, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, repent, turn away from, me, not to do it anymore. I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. He will restore our land. God is going to do what God is going to do. But there's things that we must do as well. And so we have to walk in that humility. We have to be humble. We have to do what scripture tells us to do. We have to come together in unity. We have to lock arms together, walk with each other, love each other journey with each other, help each other, have that compassion. Jesus is compassionate and we're supposed to be imitators of Christ. So why not do what he's telling us to do? Imagine that. Imagine what would happen. 
I just look forward to today that we can just do what God is telling us to do and there will be no division because division is from the enemy. And I say that the enemy is a liar from the pit of hell. I look to Jesus because he is our source. So I do what only the father will told me to do come together in unity. You know, Bishop Johnson and I, we, um, we come together and we have these prayer gatherings and we pray in unity. We uh, stand with each other and we just love each other. And the thing is, is that that's what it's all about coming together. It doesn't matter what denomination you are. It does not matter because God is the Lord of all. So let's just come together in unity. Humble ourselves. So Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that we come before you and claim 2 Chronicles 7.14. We are your people called by your name. We thank you for hearing our prayers and moving by your spirit in our land. Your word declares that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We receive your blessings, Holy Spirit. Father, you are our refuge and our stronghold. I declare a spirit of humility be released in us. I pray for unity and harmony. I bind division in the name of Jesus. I pray that our eyes will be open to see, our ears will be open to hear, and our hearts will be open to receive. According to your power within us, we will be united in spirit. I pray in the name of Jesus that if anyone is dealing with fear, I bind fear in the name of Jesus. I pray right now, Father, that we all, we all experience power, love, and of a sound mind. That power is that exousia power, that delegated influence and authority, that dunamis power, that dynamite power. So I lift it up to you in the name of Jesus. I pray that if there's anything that is not of you, if it's in opposition of what your word says, we bind it right now in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree unity in the name of Jesus. We come together. We come together in the name of Jesus. I believe that now is the time. And as Bishop always says, we are better together. So I lift it up right now. So I ask you right now, Father God, to do what only you can do. Do what only you can do. Turn our hearts. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.